Hello, welcome back. So, this section we're going to talk about general continuous random variables and how we treat those. Okay, so we're with we'll see with um, continuous random variables we actually have to start getting pretty mathy here. Okay, because because why is that? So we know what a continuous random variable is, right? Where we've got an uncountable amount of potential values this variable could take on, usually things that we measure, right? And what we're interested here then is the area on an interval, okay? So you can kind of visualize these. Remember we denote or we um, represent continuous random variables with PDFs, probability density functions, okay? and we can visualize probabilities as areas under that curve. Okay, so how do we find areas under a curve, right? Well, we have a mathematical tool for that, right? That's a, an integral. In this case, we can do definite integrals, right? So say we have a random variable with, now, now depending on the, the resource you look at, sometimes you see these, it'll, it'll define it as from negative infinity to infinity, right? But we know not, not every random variable is defined from negative infinity to infinity, so depending on what you're looking at just make sure you realize okay every every continuous random variable is going to be going to be bounded it's going to have some sort of lower bound or upper bound right so whether that's to negative infinity or positive infinity all right so a little little aside there but basically the idea here is in order to find a probability say we wanted to find an in between probability the probability of our random variable x being between two numbers a and b well, you can take the definite integral from A to B of its PDF. All right, what if I wanted to find a greater than probability, say greater than some number A? Well, I could integrate from A to the upper bound of that random variable. I could integrate its PDF. What if I want to find a less than probability? Well, I could integrate from my lower bound up to that number B. That PDF. Okay? So maybe you're thinking, especially if you're if you're thinking back to discrete random variables, you're you're thinking, okay, well this is less than, greater than. What about less than or equal to, greater than or equal to? Well, think about the difference between continuous random variables and discrete random variables. There doesn't exist probability at a specific value of continuous random variables. Remember the idea is we have a finite amount of probability, everything has to add up to one, where everything in this case has to actually integrate to one. All right, but if I'm dividing that finite area of probability by infinity, right, that's essentially zero. So the probability, so we know the probability of a continuous random variable being exactly equal to some number, right, is essentially zero. Okay, the, the mean value theorem from calculus right kind of kind of shows this idea okay so so remember this idea of the mean value theorem like if I have two numbers a and b and I'm taking that integral um, if I make a and b closer and closer to each other is that as that I think sometimes it's called a neighborhood as that neighborhood gets smaller and smaller um, and if that neighborhood gets as small as possible aka b minus a equal to zero right then there exists no no area at that point. Alright, so basically what that implies is whether it's less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, doesn't matter. Alright, with continuous random variables, that's one nice thing. We don't have to be as careful with that sort of thing as we do with discrete random variables. Alright, so let's go over some more notation here. Okay, so first of all we know a PDF, the value of a PDF at any point needs to be greater than zero, right? Basically what that says, we can't have negative probabilities, right? We know that. That's one of the first axioms of probability, right? We also know, so this kind of goes back to axioms of probability as well. We know the sum of all of our outcomes in a sample space need to add up to one. Well, our PDF from our lower bound to our upper bound needs to integrate to one. Right, we already defined this. The probability of the variable being between two numbers is this. 
expression. All right, we also know the probability of any one number is, is zero. All right, notice one and four sort of look like uh, contradictory statements or that they couldn't go together. But basically, just remember, number one is basically saying we can't have negative probabilities. Number four is where we're acknowledging there is no probability at a single value of x. All right, so, so that's the idea of our PDF. What about a CDF with the continuous random variable? Well, your CDF is defined like this, right? We know what a CDF is. It's the probability of x being less than or equal to some number. All right, we already know that. That's, that's the same as a discrete random variable. But we find the probability of x being less than or equal to some number differently here, right? It's the integral from whatever, whatever bounds my, um, my variable is defined on, right? Your CDF would be the integral from your lower bound to x, fx, dx, that PDF. All right, so your CDF doesn't, in, now in some cases, it may have a nice closed form, but that's, that's how you find the CDF. All right, so my CDF, again, also denoted as big capital F of X, whereas my PDF is lowercase f of X. Your CDF is the integral of your PDF. All right, conversely, what kind of undoes an integral? A derivative, right? So conversely, your PDF is the derivative of your CDF. All right, so you can go back and forth between the two. If you have a nice form of a PDF, or if it's an ugly PDF and you want to find the CDF, you can do it that way. If it's an ugly CDF and you'd rather work with the PDF, you can do it that way. All right, whenever we're working with any type of variable, we're always interested in measures here, such as our mean and variance. So how do we find the mean or expected value of a continuous random variable? Well, we know what that looked like for a discrete random variable, right? It was basically a weighted average. Um, we took each value, multiplied it by its probability, added all those up. Well, we're not adding things with continuous random variables. We're, we're using integrals, right? Integrals essentially are an infinite sum. All right, so we take each value of x, multiply it by its probability, similar idea. But basically, we just integrate x times its PDF from the lower bound to the upper bound over all values of x. All right, integrate x times its PDF over all values of x. That'll give us our expected value. The variance, similarly, we're integrating over all values of x, x minus the mean squared, the squared deviations time the PDF. All right, then of course, we know our standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. Now let's go a little bit deeper on the variance here and expected value as an operator here. All right, remember, for a continuous random variable, we again saw something similar to this with discrete random variables. The expected value of a function, right, this works similarly to how it did with discrete random variables. The expected value of a function for a continuous random variable, it's that function times the PDF integrated over all values of x. All right. So that then followed to let us write the variance formula in this computational form. All right, this computational form is much, much easier, right, if you, if you look back here at our, if we look back here at this original kind of theoretical or, or textbook formula of the variance, you think about what you would rather integrate. Would you rather have to integrate an expression like this Right, where you'd have to do some kind of substitution, um, then integrate by parts, probably. Would you rather do that, or would you rather do this? Because remember, e of x is a constant. Right here, you probably still have to integrate by parts, but notice like this is only x squared for the variance, so not that bad. All right, so we can write that shorthand like this: the variance of x is equal to expected value of x squared minus expected value of x squared. All right, so those are all the big points with continuous random variables, notation, expected values, variances. Um, we opt for the computational form there. So check out our application video and we'll do some examples. Thank you for tuning in.
and we'll see you next time.